Hi, welcome to the fourth in a series of workshops hosted by Pegasus Tech Ventures. My name is Bill Reichert, and I'm a partner here at Pegasus. At Pegasus, we look forward to helping every entrepreneur be as successful as they can be. And so we've put together this workshop series to help share our experiences, our scars, our successes, what we've seen in the world with entrepreneurs all over the world. So today, what we're gonna be doing is talking about perfecting your pitch. I'm gonna share the Silicon Valley secrets for entrepreneurs. So I was started out as an entrepreneur here in Silicon Valley many, many years ago. And so as an entrepreneur, I have given literally hundreds of pitches. And then I became a venture capitalist. And as a VC, now I have heard tens of thousands of pitches. So I've seen a lot of pitches and I've spent a fair amount of time trying to figure out how can we do a better job of helping entrepreneurs be more effective with their pitches. So I came up with a few epiphanies about pitching that I want to share with you today. So the first thing that every entrepreneur needs to appreciate is that your reality as an entrepreneur is that you don't have minutes to explain your company, you have seconds. Your reality is you have about 20 seconds to be compelling or you might as well go home. So think about it. Wherever you are in the world, rarely can you actually use your elevator pitch. You can't be at an event or a trade show and walk up to somebody at the shrimp bar and do two minutes of your elevator pitch. That's not going to work. You've got 20 seconds to engage with that person and then get permission to talk more. So that's the way the world really works. It doesn't work the way they teach you with elevator pitches and demo day pitches and partner pitches. So what I want to talk about today is how to be effective, first grabbing the attention of an investor and then getting them to ask for more information about your company. So it turns out the secret to being effective at grabbing the attention of an investor goes back to Human Anatomy 101. What do I mean by that? Well, we know from research that an effective communicator engages three body parts. What are the three body parts? Well, the first is the brain. Of course, naturally, right? What you say has got to be understandable. It's got to be logical. It's got to fit with my understanding of the way business works, with the way physics works, with the way finance works. It's got to make sense to the brain. Now, we spend most of our time coaching entrepreneurs to focus on that aspect of their pitch, put together a logical argument with data and evidence and convince them that yours is the best company to invest in. So that seems to make sense. And that's how I was trained as an entrepreneur. And then I became a venture capitalist and I discovered something critically important, that the secret to connecting with investors is you got to get their hearts to beat faster. You got to get their pulse racing. You got to get them excited about your company. You've got to connect with the heart. So, what nobody told me when I was an entrepreneur that I'm sharing with you now is a dirty little secret about venture capital. VCs do not invest with their brains. They invest with their hearts. You've got to get them to fall in love. You've got to get them excited. You've got to get them to say, wow, that's amazing. Tell me more. Wow is not an intellectual response. Wow is an emotional response. Wow comes from the heart, not from the head. So that's the second body part. The third body part, you got to pass the gut check, right? You've got to make sure that when you start talking to an investor, they believe what you're saying. We all know human beings are wired to have an immediate instinctive reaction. Whenever we meet someone new, whenever we hear something new, we instantly put that into a bucket. I trust this person. I don't trust this person. I believe this idea. I don't believe this idea. That's the gut check. You got to make sure that you pass the gut check, that you are credible in what you're saying. 
a lot of entrepreneurs, you're so excited about what you're doing. There's a tendency to go a little over the top and maybe exaggerate, come on a little too strong and you destroy your credibility. Don't destroy your credibility. Be someone that we trust and we want to work with. So that's an important aspect. So three body parts, head, heart, gut. Which one do you think is the most important? Just checking here to see if you're listening, which is the most important? It's the heart. The heart is the most important. The secret I'm sharing with you today is remember, you got to get them to fall in love. You got to get them excited. You got to get them to wow. That's amazing. Okay. So now the reality is in our experience with entrepreneur pitches, typically what we get is something like this. Coolco is a dynamic startup company that has developed a revolutionary technology that's going to disrupt our $56 billion industry. Our team has over 45 years of combined experience and we have three patents pending. We project that our curve jumping paradigm shifting technology will transform the blah, 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 right? That's kind of typically what we get. Or at the other extreme, at the other extreme, a company came into our office and they really said this. They really said, we use 2048 Diffie-Hellman key exchange and 256-bit triple BES to provide impenetrable encryption for your IoT devices. Okay, <laughs> okay. So as you might guess, our reaction was, huh? And this is where the entrepreneur was. You do not want to be here. Where you want to be is getting to wow. And so what I want to share with you is a little bit of the secret to getting to wow. So it starts with the three seeds. What are the three seeds? So in order to connect with an investor, you've got to be clear, you've got to be compelling, and you've got to be credible. You've got to be clear what it is you're doing. It's amazing how many entrepreneurs are not that clear. You've got to be compelling. You've got to get our hearts beating faster. You've got to convince us that you've got something that is better than anyone else out there by a factor of 10. You've got to be compelling. And then third, you've got to be credible. You've got to give us some evidence that we can believe what you're saying. So be clear, connect with the head, right? Be compelling, get my heart beating faster. Be credible, pass the gut check. So that's the core of it. Now, I'm going to share with you a model for crafting your wow for all of these situations where you're trying to connect with investors, where you're trying to launch a pitch with investors. So this is that first 20 seconds where you're trying to connect them, to grab them, to get them to pay attention. How do you do that? So first, give me one sentence that states clearly what it is you're doing a one sentence description of your company and your business. What is it you are doing better than anyone else out there? So now a lot of pitch coaches will tell you, you know, you should make it eight words or maybe 12 words, or it should be something your grandmother can understand or something that a third grader can understand. Forget all that stuff, right? Just a simple, clear sentence that any reasonably informed business person will understand. I suggest you use, for, for example, sort of simple tech crunch language, right? So, you know, venture journalism type of language. If a journalist were to come to you and interview you about your company, how would you describe your company? You want to give that journalist a sentence that he or she could just put right in the lead paragraph of the story. What is the sentence that a good journalist would use to describe your company? So they're not going to say, I met this company that has a disruptive revolutionary technology that's going to transform the healthcare industry. A journalist would never say that. A journalist would never say, I met a company that is empowering the future of education. A journalist wouldn't say that. What's the sentence that a journalist would use to describe your company? It's amazing how many entrepreneurs stumble when I just ask them that question. Hey, tell me what you do. And they start talking about their technology or they talk about their product or they talk about the problem. They won't tell me what they're doing. So just 
give me one sentence that tells me what you're doing, okay? So we're eight seconds into your pitch now, right? <laughs> okay, second sentence. What's the second sentence? What is your compelling benefit and who realizes that benefit? So tell me something that you can do that's 10 times better than anyone else or one-tenth the cost or it lasts five times longer. Give me some compelling benefit that is the core of the reason your company will be successful. So one way perhaps to start that sentence is with the language, the big idea behind our company is dot, dot, dot. You know, we can accelerate data analytics by a factor of 100x using the same hardware. Wow, right? So do you have a compelling benefit that you can state simply and clearly in one sentence and explain so that I know how much better you are than everyone else and who you're targeting? So that's your second sentence. So maybe we're 14 seconds into your pitch now, right? Third sentence. Here's another secret I'm gonna tell you about the venture capital industry that I didn't appreciate when I was an entrepreneur. So it turns out, you know, VCs who've been around for a while, as soon as you open your mouth, they start thinking of all the other companies they've heard and met that sound just like you. So you walk into their office or you meet them at a trade show and you start talking and what happens in the back of their heads is, oh yeah, I've heard this before. I remember that team, where was that? I met them and they were doing, what was the name of that company? That's what's going on in the back of our heads. I'm sorry, that's just the reality. So what you've got to do is you got to shut that down as quickly as you can. You can't wait, you know, to get to their partners meeting before you explain to them, we are different than all those other companies. And so unlike other companies you might've come across that sound similar, what we're doing is this. So that's a third sentence. So that's, you know, 20 seconds and you've been clear, compelling and credible about what your business is. So I urge you to craft those sentences. Now, what I'm also gonna tell you is I firmly believe that no entrepreneur should follow the templates that are out there. You can use templates maybe as guides, but never religiously follow somebody else's template. And I just gave you a template, right? Okay, so I'm telling you, you don't have to have one, two, three sentences just the way I suggested, but you should have those sentences. As an entrepreneur for your team, you need those three sentences. You need a sentence that is what you do. You need a sentence that is your compelling benefit. And you need a sentence that explains how you're different and why you're credible. So you need the sentences anyway, but maybe there's a different way to get there. That's fine. I, you know, you figure it out. You can craft a different approach to doing the whole thing. One of the ways I've heard that is very powerful is if you start with the phrase, imagine if, you know, imagine if you had a device that blah, 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 right? So you can paint a picture that explains what you're doing, explains the benefit, explains your customer, and maybe gives you some credibility. So there are different ways to do it. I don't want you to follow this as a template. I'm just saying that you've got to make sure that you are clear and compelling and credible, all right? So now let's talk about crafting the perfect pitch. So everybody's looking to put together the perfect pitch. And I wish I could tell you there is such a thing, but your reality is there is no perfect pitch because every pitch situation is different. So probably, you know, there are a whole bunch of different types of pitch situations. Typically, right, there's an elevator pitch. So everybody is taught to do an elevator pitch. Here's the reality. The only place you can use an elevator pitch is at an elevator pitch competition, right? So, so that's fine. You know, it's sort of like the demo day pitch, right? So you all have to do a demo day pitch because most entrepreneurs go through some form of pitch day, demo day kind of experience, which frequently is similar to the elevator pitch, right? So these are very short pitches and they have to be very punchy and you gotta get to the key topics very quickly. That's great. Now, the shortest version of the pitch is what we call the handshake pitch. Not a lot of people have heard it phrased this way, but the handshake pitch is, what do you say when you're being introduced? Hi, my name is Bill. 
is that good enough? No, <laughs> you don't want to do that, right? Hi, my name is Bill. I'm a partner at Pegasus Tech Ventures. Pegasus is a $1.5 billion global venture capital firm based here in Silicon Valley. 15 seconds. Oh, okay. Pretty clear. What's going on there? What's your handshake pitch? What is you, what are you going to say when you're introduced that makes it very clear what you're doing and why you might be valuable to the person you're meeting? So that's the handshake pitch, and that's about 20 seconds. And that's similar to the framework I gave you for getting to wow, right? But then at the other end of the spectrum, there's the partner pitch. The partner pitch is the pitch that you use when you get invited into the VC firm office, you're in the conference room with the partners, you've got an hour and you're ready to present in front of the partners. So you've got your full slide deck, you've practiced, you've got it down. One of your co-founders is with you to help you out during the pitch. That's gonna be you know, a 20 minute pitch. It might be 15, 20 slides, something like that. That's a very different pitch. Then. Believe it or not, there's a different version of that. So the partners are going to say, great, thanks. Um, could you send us a copy of that pitch? Now, if you've been good at designing the pitch, that pitch has had very few words on it, images and graphs, very few words. Because when you're presenting a pitch, you don't want them reading the slides. You want them watching you and listening to you. So a good pitch that you're presenting has very few words on it. But if they say, hey, could you leave this behind or send us a copy? Then you're gonna have a different pitch deck. So the leave behind or send in advance, copy is gonna have more words on it. So I'm sorry, but you need a different set of slides. You're gonna PDF those and have more words. It's gonna be something that one of the partners who wasn't in the room will be able to read and understand. So that's a different deck. So my point is that if you want to craft the perfect pitch, it's going to be multiple different decks that are applicable in different situations. But the same principles apply to all of them. You've got to be clear, you've got to be compelling, and you've got to be credible. So now in terms of putting together your deck, <clears throat> everybody wants to know, what are the slides I got to include in my deck? And so I'm going to share with you now the core topics that we want to make sure that you cover if you're going to send us a deck or if you're going to come in and present to us. So what are the core topics you've got to make sure that you cover in your pitch deck? <clears throat> so sharing with you some of those topics, first, you should make sure at the beginning of your deck, you have an overview that in essence captures your wow. What do you do? What's the benefit? What's the evidence that we should believe you? So some, the first slide should be some overview that captures that, that gives me the full context of the business that you're in, that sets me up for everything else that is to follow. Now, what's the sequence of the rest of the slides? The sequence for the rest of the slides should be what are the logical or normal questions that an investor would ask once they hear the core idea, then what's the next question they're going to ask? They may want they may want to hear about competition. They may want to hear about technology. They may want to hear about the market. It depends on your company. So there's no rigid template for every company. It depends on your business and the challenges that you face. So don't take this list as a rigid template. Take it as a guide for the topics that you need to cover. So I said, start with an overview, but then you know maybe the next thing is the market opportunity. You know what is the market opportunity you're going after? Sometimes people phrase that as the problem. Not every good business is solving a problem, in spite of what the pitch coaches may tell you. Some great businesses are actually exploiting an opportunity. So you know Facebook. What problem did Facebook solve? There were other social networks. So it was exploiting this opportunity that they had to build a credible social network. So market opportunity or problem, that might be the next topic. At some point early on, you wanna talk about your solution and the benefits that you provide. So that's your product, your service, whatever you're offering. So that's a topic you gotta cover. 
And then related to your solution is the technology you're using. Are you using proprietary, te proprietary technology that you developed? Is there some other secret sauce that may be patentable or that maybe represents some barrier to entry that you've got? You know, you wanna make sure you cover that off. <laughs> Somewhere you wanna talk about your competitive advantage. So every investor is gonna to wanna to know who is the competition and what's the basis of competition in the market? And what advantage do you have over all those competitors? You got to talk about your business model. How are you going to make money? How are you going to offer the product to the market? At what price? You know, are you going to use a freemium model? Are you going to use a subscription model? What sort of model are you using? And then more probably more detail on your go-to-market strategy. Depending upon where you are in your stage of development, Investors are gonna to wanna to know how are you gonna go find and acquire customers and scale up your business? So usually that's called your go-to-market strategy. Then you gotta make sure at some point you talk about your traction. How much traction do you have? Maybe you're pre-revenue, but you've got some initial point proof of concept or NRE type of relationships, or you've got some beta testers. Depending upon where you are, you gotta make sure you clarify how much traction you have, and then what sort of pipeline you have in terms of visibility to customers and revenues going forward. Another thing you want to make sure you cover are the key milestones that you intend to hit over the coming quarters and years. <clears throat> so those key milestones represent inflection points in validating your business and proving the value of your company. So it's going to be important that you're able to, let, to specify those key milestones. And then tied into that are your financial projections. So investors are going to want to know what you think you're going to be able to do in terms of revenues, and then how much you're going to have to spend to get there, sort of over the very near term, and then over the long term. So that then rolls into your funding plan. How much money have you raised to date from what sort of investors? And then how much are you going to have to raise to get to the next milestone? And then how much are you going to have to raise after that? So they're going to want to understand your funding plan. And then, of course, we need to know the team. Who's the team behind this? And how, can they, how are they going to be able to execute all of these plans that we've been talking about? Now, this is a source of some controversy. When should I talk about the team? Everybody asks, where does the team go in the slide deck? Well, what I think is if you have an extraordinary team, in terms of maybe you have a Nobel laureate on the team, put it up front, right? <laughs> Tell us up front who's on the team. If you know it's your university dorm mate and his cousin, great, that's wonderful, I appreciate that, but you don't necessarily have to lead with that. Now, again, it all depends on the situation. If you're actually presenting to a group of people and you have your co-founders with you, then yes, you're gonna to wanna to introduce the team at the front end. But if you're sending a deck ahead, or if it's a leave behind deck, you know, maybe the team doesn't belong right at the front. So it just depends on where you are with the team and what the situation is in terms of the presentation you're doing. And then of course you need some sort of closing summary to pull it all together, to reiterate your compelling, your compelling value proposition and what you're looking for you know, in terms of funding for this, this cycle of your company. So that's an overview of perfecting your pitch. Lastly, I just wanna share with you that you have the opportunity to hear this and more if you wanna go get the book called Getting to Wow. So I was had the opportunity to write a book called Getting to Wow with a colleague and friend, Angelica Blenstrup. You can find it on Amazon as either an ebook or as a paperback. So I hope this has been somewhat useful for you and helping you develop your pitch. And we look forward to working with you in the future. Let us know if you have any comments or suggestions. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.